Hey everyone, Gizora's here, and Alice decided to drop another SMT5 preview trailer, and um, yeah, I just want to react to it, because I am so excited for this game. So anytime they drop new Atlas, like new SMT news, I am so stoked. I made sure to stay off of Twitter, because I'm pretty sure people are popping off and reacting for that, so let's, let's see. Okay, let me hit play. Oh. Okay. Oh! It's her! Oh. Well, that's a strong way to start. Oh my fucking god, we have Gerd to deal with chasing us now? Holy shit! Okay, that's a new girl. Wait, this song's different. We changed it. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, Alice is a navigator. Ooh, that's a new demon. Whoa. Garo. Whoa. Yo, him. <gasps> Maximo, he's back. <laughs> okay, that's quite the pose. <gasps> We're fighting all four of them at the same time. Oh my god. That must be the Magatsuki skill. Uh? What? New form? Whoa! What the hell? Wait. New oh. Wait, he looks different. On They're redoing this uh, quest link. Hey! <gasps> we get to play as him! Okay. What? Whoa, okay. Holy shit. This new theme is so good too. Yo! Wait, this new song is so bumping. <laughs> like, I'm trying not to be too loud because I don't want to wake anybody up. But <laughs> it's so cool. All right, so okay, that was okay. That was so hype. <laughs> oh. They, 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 there's either a new battle theme, it was probably for that new domain, because like how they did for, um, the castle, Demon Castle, they did a new battle theme and such, that's probably there, but they also remixed the original one. Like, because it started, it's, it started off normal, like how it normally, the normal battle theme was, and then they started playing, like, like, the notes started changing. Okay, but I want, I, I need to go back to this, like, like, I need to, I'll start going, uh, going through and looking through specific parts. But holy shit, that was amazing! Okay. I'm, I'm forgetting her name, unfortunately, but... So, okay. This is probably happening in the second... Uh... In the second area. 
because I think that's that's what the colors in the in the background remind me of. Uh, after the school gets invaded and uh, some of the students get taken into the take, taken to dot. That's I think this is what this area is. So I think that's what this point in story is happening. But I don't think she's going to die because we saw later on. Oh, we, oh, OK, I'll, I'll, when I get to that, I'll get to that. OK, so here's the thing in. I remember specifically in the original uh, SMT5 that <laughs> the avian uh, demons, they have a very aggressive AI, so they would just like dive bomb you up the wazoo. So the fact that we see Gar Garulu now uh, in the game, I'm just imagining that he's gonna be dive. They're gonna be dive bombing like me, like crazy now. Okay, this looks like a new area altogether, which makes sense. But also, this I guess is how we get to those uh, grind rail areas, the segments. That's so. It's so cool. Okay, unfortunately we can't we don't have an English translation of the skills, but let's see if we can get that. Okay. So... Oh okay. I didn't mean to do that. Okay, um let me slow this down for a second. 23 seconds. Interesting. Plus nine on fire, electricity. Oh, they have the maxed out skills and such everything. Alright. I know definitely this time around I'm definitely doing a magic build. Because <laughs> I did strength build in my original, and it was cool and everything, but I want to see how magic goes. This is quite the skill. Something tell okay, something tells me this is gonna be an enemy exclusive, and what she's stealing here is Magatsuhi. So you probably it, it, it cut off after this, but I'm gonna I'm imagining that this Magatsuhi Max, um bar is about to disappear like it'd be empty that's that's i love how the uh screen effect goes to dark after she ingests it interesting okay well she's able to vis come and visit you which i'm a little surprised i'd imagine they'd meet after school not during school i wonder what her role overall is going to be um i have, if i have to assume i think she's going to be the person with lilith's knowledge because i feel like that makes sense lilith seems to be the head of the enemy uh demon alliance and um you introduce this new person so i'm assuming that's the case also the fact that she's using electricity right i mean she was fire in the first one maybe not wait 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 wait, wait. did he change skills huh interesting Dazai is level 44. What is this image? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What, what is this? <laughs> what, what is this, like, icon? Why does he look constipated? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay. Well, he was about to use a light skill, but then they cut it to using a fire skill. I, I'm gonna guess that him being in the party it has something to do with the quest and it, like and it's not like a uh area thing or maybe it could i mean it could be both but it's also interesting oh wait i just realized plus three here oh, what's plus three there but he's level 44 but he's using like a level 12 demon <gasps> Not only that, it's it's a Tarva skill. So, hmm, maybe if Dazai is like, if Dazai isn't a quest, like, it, it isn't that battle for like a quest specific reason, and it's like an overworld, like a region thing, and for like a segment of the main game, maybe, hmm, 
maybe you're able to like deploy certain demons on him and so those will fill up his slot skills so you get to mix and match which demon so then like for example you saw uh okay I, I don't remember that demon's name so let's use another one so let's say you used jack frost and Ludic uh, Guro. i'm probably butchering his the french guy's name but then so you're able to do jack frost skills like jack buffalo and then you're also able to have like soul the eclair or whatever his electric based move is so you both have them on Daza. so like it just counts for like versatility so you get to like shove like five demons into one person and have like, them use like selective of the skills there wait Oh, do ley lines work differently this time? Maybe that's. Huh. I'm guessing that's they reworked how ley lines work. On, okay, as we can see here, this looks like it's third region, right? Because it looks like it's close to the fairy um, sanctuary. That was. No, no, sorry. Second region. Second region had the fairy. Uh, forest slash fairy domain it looks like it's close to there or could this be a new region altogether considering the stuff in the background doesn't look the same you see narcissus but it's interesting we see alice as the navigator for this oh it's actually oh this demon's just chilling in the, in the real world and it seems like the overworld has changed a bit as well because the angle is different like yeah, I don't remember the game being in like this kind of angle. Oh, and it's a uh, what is his name? It's not Goku, right? It's Go Goku. I, I I don't remember. But the the monk. I wonder. I hope he has a more important role to play because he was just kind of there tidbits, and then at the very end he explained something. Okay, this is this is demon negotiation, obviously. Or maybe not. Wait. She's, she's explaining something, and then it cuts to a silhouette of Loaded Guru. Maybe. Maybe it's something quest related? Saying, I'm looking for this demon? This looks like the fairy domain. Right? No, it's something else entirely. Maybe. I, I, I don't remember. I don't know if this means the fusion's changing. I forgot, is this guy Azazel or Asma? No, it's, I think he's Azazel. So that's cool we get to see him in 3D, because the last time we saw him in 3D was uh, Soul Hackers 2, I think, but he was a boss. This was crazy. They brought Mastema back? Like, Holy shit. He messed us back in 3D and his face is longer than normal. In my, I, I think he looks longer than normal. But goddamn. That... I wonder if Mastema is going to be antagonizing Ab Abdiel. I feel like that's such a, that's a Mastema thing to do. Probably also to see if like... Master will be there to see if Abdiel actually does fall to temptation, which in the original story, uh, story, she becomes a fallen angel in order to become the Nahobino, in order to ascend to God's throne, to replace God, in order to uphill, up, oh, sorry, up, up take up his, um, or take up their, like, just to basically continue God's order. I don't know why I was blanking out on that, but I'm interested and curious to see. If, like, where, what Massimo's gonna do in all this. Because. Well, you know, in a strange journey, he was the law, rep like, law representative demon. And in 4, he was DLC story content, but he was also there to say, okay, the angels are getting out of, like, getting out of hand, so you gotta go take care of them. Okay, but who is that? Is that like a firebird? 
Okay, we see Lilith. It's interesting because it seemed like we fight all four of them at one point. We're probably going to lose too. Also, this is a... This is a crazy, crazy animation skill. I mean, granted, we had Cleopatra's skill, but like... This is crazy. Okay. What did this do, though? It literally enacted on a, bar a barrier of some kind. And I still think this this demon here is the prettiest of them all. It looks like someone got charmed. Wait. I feel like this is like... Uh, her whatever Cleopatra's skill was with that charms raises like or lowers attack and defense at the same time. Oh, we're also fighting with um the new girl. I forgetting her name. This is a crazy uh Magatsuhi skill. <laughs> like, why are they acting like like kind of all dainty and everything? I know some people are gonna go wild for it though. That's for a fa that's for sure. Okay, now this was um this was the coolest part. And this was also in the okay, so that so like playing in the background for up to this part was like a remix of the original battle theme for SFD5. I'm convinced it's a remix because it does sound different. It sounds like there's a second part to it. Which is amazing. And now we're getting into the like the awesome battle. I'm gonna assume that this new theme that plays at this point forward is a new battle theme, because that it sounds like it's something you'd hear in a battle theme. But this is wild. We're get, like getting a Nahubino transformation. So this this kind of had like uh how, how to explain. So I always thought it was weird that uh so the Nahobino that we were, we are, the main character is is the is the is a Nahobino version of Susano, because Algami is a fragment of Susano. However, Al Algami never really acted like Susano because Susano was like a like was a trickster in the mythology, but Algami was very stoic, and I don't know because it was a he was a fragment that lost his memories, therefore he didn't behave the way that he did, but. If he was also a fragment, I would assume that it would make sense that he wasn't, he's not the actual Susano, but like a copy. So I don't know if this is to imply that one, another being is being mixed with the main protagonist, which it could be that maybe another fragment of Susano's knowledge is in the new girl. And therefore at one point she's going to die and then transfer her like knowledge and stuff into the, this Nahubino to become the new form, or another demon steps up and becomes part of him. And this has to be very late in the game, I think. Because I don't expect Nahobiho, which is who we see later on, to be mid-game. I think he's going to be closer towards end-game. Okay, and this is, I'm, I'm gonna guess this is a new final dungeon then, if that's the case. I, 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 I'll have to see if I can find, get a English, I'll probably not do another video for the English translation of this. I'll probably take screenshots of certain things that sounded interesting, like that seemed interesting and to point out. It's also cool that you're changing gravity on this. Like you, that that's what that device does, right? Because you, you you switch what side is you're standing on, so you're, you're altering your gravity. So okay. I want to see something. Okay. Okay. See, yes, this is late game because you see level seventy. Uh, I don't know how I feel about the new weapon change though. It's kind of cool, but at the same time, I kind of like the hand blades. It's just a level seventy. The hair color is so not. A, it's not 
it, it's kind of purple too. It's like bluish purple, but the blades are still like the same blue, I think, or maybe not. Maybe it is more purple as well. Okay, there's a new light skill. It's just gonna be interesting. 45 MP though, that is pricey. I think it's actually really cool about this is the hairstyle is more like the protagonist and not super long, like the original Nahibino. So I wonder if it makes it, may it seem like it's powers more of the protagonist than it is of like a combination of Algami and the protagonist. I I think I like this new design better than the original one, but I like the color scheme of the original one better. Okay, is this not Ludig? No, it's not because he's he stance is different. So this is a new wolf. No, 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 never mind. That is Ludigoro. But what is he doing? But like, why is he red? Sorry, that's what I meant to say. Also, um, this this is interesting because this this is probably the Kansu line with him and the and the Yuzu sister and. Is his name Yuzu? I, I, fuck, I, I'm forgetting other. I should have checked up on their names before watching this. That's my fault. But this is this is to get the true neutral. This is, or this is one of the major quests that you need to get the true neutral. But it seems they're redo. I think they're redoing it because this cutscene wasn't there, and he, she wasn't here at this point. Because I know at this point there, there is you do this battle and then there's a major, there's a major decision you have to make with cut you off from this quest line or not and so yeah maybe they're just redoing it and adding more stuff to it well i mean they have to because you see the new form here so i guess i should have put two and two together so that's jack agilau I saw a screenshot of that. So I understand where that was from. It's cool to see this demon again. <laughs> this is funny. <laughs> and so cool that we get to play as him, though. We're in the Nahubiho. It seems it's interesting because we haven't really. I mean, Yakumo and uh, Yakumo and the Snake Demon Lady. I, I can't believe I'm forgetting her name, but they kind of they were important, but they were also kind of side. They kind of been sidelined for a lot of the story. They just kind of showed up, so I don't know if they can continue to be sidelined or and just show up at certain points. Or sorry, Nua, that's her name. I don't know if Yakumo and Nua are going to. I would hope. I mean, this is a new cutscene, obviously. So maybe they become like they have more scenes early on and like throughout than whatever they did. Because you fight Nua once, you fight uh, Yakumo once, and then you, depending on which route you take, either fight them in their Nahobino form, or they die in front of you. Um, so this should be interesting. I can't imagine that they would take the side of the new four demon ladies. Like at all, I'd pro they'd probably want them dead. That this is probably like a probably towards the end of the new dungeon. You know, also thinking because we have Lilith and those other three demons present. They're probably gonna be the. They're probably gonna be what prolongs Bethel's formation for probably most of the game. Because I can't imagine that other Bethel leaders like Zeus, Shiva, um, well, Shiva sent Vasuki as a, as his uh, like uh, representative, but like Zeus, Odin, Kansu, Shiva slash Vasuki. I can't imagine they'd want to split up. Now that, uh, after learning about the truth about the Nahobino, with someone like Lilith being present, because they'd probably start to 
because obviously if you start to split apart, then they're gonna get picked off one by one. But okay, that's pro that's a we saw part of that scene elsewhere in the first uh, trailer as well. I'm I don't know what to say. Like I said, music sounds awesome. New skills. I I hope that's a light magic based skill and not a light physical based skill because I think as cool. I mean, yes, there were more. There were a lot of magic based Nahobino skills. More, probably more. Actually, I don't remember what the distribution is, but I feel like the ones that matter the most like the, for the unique Nahobino skills were physical only, right? Because Ruinous Thunder was heavy. But we had no severe magic skills, so I'm gonna hope that's like a light severe skill. And if that's the case, then I hmm, I wish that Nahubino had an equivalent to Awaken Power that Nanashi had and Four Apocalypse, and maybe we will with the new form and everything. Because with that, we were um, I was a we were able to a bunch more magic skills in smt4 and with five you had to or at least from what i've seen you had you couldn't use all elements because then you'd be lifting out uh, re missing out on passives like granted also another thing i want i want the f to re uh to change back how concentrate and charge work in this game or in five because they they adjusted the multipliers where it was not really conductive to run charge or con or concentrate really well it was it was less reliable to run charge concentrate was different because you for for physical skills you might as well have critical like like a critical charge as opposed to uh charge because you end up doing more damage that way because more of the better skill sorry the better skills at that point in the game had the added effect of oh um there's a boosted damage when you get a crit and there were skill passive skills that boosted the damage uh when getting crit so but also like reduced what it was normally so as long as you guarantee you crit you just over you just massively uh dps the enemy the point where just you needed to guarantee the crit over getting a uh, charge off magic was a little bit different because well you can't crit off magic unless you have the magatsuhi skill but even so magic was more of turn management as opposed to just dpsing in five but i think it would just be cool to just get more uh uh severe skills that and in this case does magic severe but yeah June fourteenth, I f can't freaking wait. I have the game pre uh not preloaded, but like I have the game uh it's in my Steam library, so I just gotta download it when it comes out, and I will be playing. Hopefully by then Persona Three is done. I I mean I should be. I'm in end of September, right? So within like the next two months, it should definitely be done. Even if I'm playing at a slow place, like I am, kind of. But, yeah. Well, okay. Well, that's that. Okay. So, very quickly, I was meant, I meant to do this last night, but I started talking, and then I forgot to hit record. So, I just was talking to myself, and I became too tired to actually do it. But, uh, now that I'm more awake, this is the, um, this is the English dub of the second preview that got released last night and i'm just gonna go through it very quickly to see if they can piece together some information from hearing the vo english dub voices that i couldn't originally from watching the japanese version of was released on atlas 2 jp okay let's just go this let's go through this really quick still freaky <laughs> hang on one second actually to have been wreaking havoc all over Tokyo. Okay, so I think they probably, I think it was mentioned in the article, but I guess how you pr it's pronounced now, Kadishtu. Those are the four ladies that, or four lady demons that we saw um, 
as the new appearances. Uh, for the new appearances, so it's like four new lady demons that are going to be more of the central antagonists, at least for this version of the game. We got uh, like the Famitsu article talking about them, and well, we clearly saw them earlier in the first preview, and we saw them in this preview as well. Could I ask you all to go back to Shinjuku? Okay, so I guess this new segment is going back to the second area and then af like after the events of the school getting invaded which probably plays out a little bit differently now because we have the new characters and new events but that's gonna so that's gonna happen and then we have to go back to this area and probably go into another new area connected to this one section at least that's what i think is going to happen which would then expand upon into a new third area altogether I just want to check something real quick. Wall to go back to Shinjuku. Armasa Zio Rakunda. Okay. Level 27, though. And where are your demons, dude? This is your salvation. Their suffering would have ultimately served us much greater in the end. So I'm going to assume that's a Lilith talking. And I'm going to guess that she's talking about Bethel when she's saying she wants, like, the their suffering serves to our benefit. That or humans in general. But I'm going to I'm going to say assume more Bethel because I don't think these guys are going to be. I think they're going to be more chaos aligned, not. But I don't think they're going to be like a new chaos. I mean, they could be like a new chaos. So I guess maybe they're like similar to how the salvation uh, side was for uh, SMT4 Apocalypse. You can't necessarily join it, but it is an antagonistic force outside of Law and Chaos. Because we know that Chaos is represented a little bit differently in this game, or at least in the original it was. I transferred over here since we'll be. So initially, I thought there was another school that was nearby in which she would be meeting with the protagonist, like outside of school. But it seems like Bethel asked her to switch, like to transfer over to this school, and she just didn't change her uniform yet working together for a while i'm here to help you as well so if you need anything let me know i still <laughs> i still think it's funny that daze tries to take like a selfie in the middle of the battle if that demon is not dealt with she will only leave more casualties in her wake i agree with the saint we should pursue okay so this is the thing that i thought I didn't because I didn't understand earlier. I thought this whole thing with Nekamata was like a quest thing, but it seems to be there's a new mechanic to demon negotiation rather than doing the RNG questions and everything or like this the stat check. There's also the um, apparently a quizzes where it'll test your knowledge about demons. And I'm guessing if you get it correct, you gain their support and they'll join you, which is actually really cool. It actually makes demon negotiation much easier. So I'm going to definitely make use of those, uh, um, the opportunities I get to uh, answer those questions because my knowledge on demons is pretty solid once I see the silhouettes and see multiple choices. Because that's Lota Girl or the French werewolf. Okay, uh, this mechanic, the demon haunts. I'm, sim I'm guessing this is similar to uh, Soul Hackers 2's um like demon scouting thing that Ringo does at the beginning of every time she enters a new region so that should be interesting i wonder um i mean i think in the other trailer we saw that they gave items as well so i think this is also making it so so i think that's making it so uh ley line areas work a little bit differently as opposed to them just being like a small like checkpoint thing in the middle of like the open world that you could still get like attacked by they're like they're gonna become like rest areas Maybe similar to how safe rooms worked in like Persona Five. Uh, it'll be it'll be weird because this is still technically open world, quote unquote. Or I guess maybe the more accurate thing would say it's like open zone, like how Frontiers is or Sonic Frontiers is. But yeah, I'm curious to see how they're gonna implement this into Vengeance. I need someone who can fight back against the demons. You shall smite the demons that are raised. Azazel, that's cool. The malevolent and the unjust shall fall by your righteous hand. Okay, so I theorized this when I heard this in the Japanese version that 
Mastema is going to have a different approach to the protagonists than how Abdiel is. Where Abdiel in the original game was more antagonistic, Mastema seems to be more supportive and like guiding, which I think is a very Mastema thing to do. By like, to seems like the kind of angel to be like by any means to get uh, the job done that he wants done. I wonder if any any point he's going to uh what's the word like leave Abdiel's side and try to form a new law uh, faction. Like I could totally see this being like a subquest of its own kind. I mean that because um then the DLC for SMT4, Massimo gives you a bunch of quests which re uh, require you to kill the other archangels. Uh so I could totally see him doing something similar, but then obviously Abdiel's integral to, uh, integral to the story, so she's probably you're probably gonna have to fight Massima at some point at the end of the quest line. Probably, at least that's what I think. Also, it, I don't know, if it's just me. It, in the other trailer, it looked like his face was longer than it is now or maybe i just was seeing different things because i was tired just hand. i know i still want my revenge and my freedom why is this happening to i i i think that was sayori talking i think that's erica lindbeck's voice uh when she uh because she she's the voice of sayori's and i think that's her talking i guess in context to her her bullying and stuff i wonder if there's a case where she becomes an Ahubino to Lamu, like in the original story, but she regains her own consciousness, and that's why she's saying she wants her own freedom. Why did she have to live in such a goddamn broken world? Okay, I think that was Yuz Yuzu talking, or the glasses guy who's the chaos hero of this game. I think, and I think he's referring to his sister in this case, because uh, as we find out during the side quest with Kansu. Uh, Yuzu's sister is sick. Or actually, no, we've, I think we find that just by NPCs talking as well, but she has an illness of some sort. And yeah, I guess that plays into what uh, why Yuzu was talking about being born in such a broken world. But like, also the fact that this the world that they're currently in is like a fake one that's like under repair, or not under repair, it's not, under repair is not the right word. It's, um... God, uh, so like, it was like God's last miracle before he died. But it's also falling apart because God's dead. Yeah, at least that's I think that's what he's talking about. But maybe that's what gives his motivation to side more with um, the prime minister. The salvation of these cursed souls is my duty. Even after every. The crazy market city skill. You still haven't given up. So congrats! <laughs> I guess you're on the list. I don't know why Dazai said that in such, like... It didn't seem friendly when he said that. So I wonder at what point he says, like... Um... He makes that comment. I want to assume that... Like, in my, in my mind, I see it in two ways. It's either... Um... He makes it somewhat early on in the story because he develops some jealousy over the fact that you're much more capable in terms of like fighting the demons. And Bethel recognizes that. And maybe he's just feeling jealous about that. Kind of similar to how Junpei Iori is in Persona 3, at least towards the beginning of the game. Or, and I think this is more likely the case, this is him after he goes through his uh, quote-unquote transformation and becomes the law hero because when that happened he kind of he kind of got, got a bit of a personality change he became more uh cocky and just, just rude overall in general to like other people who aren't like in line with his uh with the law and abdiel yeah oh my bad
Yeah, I love the Sneak theme. Space within Bethel. It could also be considered the source of power for the Shekinah glory. Okay. I I think I I'm, I might be misremembering, but it, uh, Shekinah glory. Is there was like was there like in Strange Journey Redux something? There was some someone. I think the final boss in that game was referred to as Sheka, right? So the Shekinah glory have something similar to do with that. I I'm not sure. I think it does. I, I think I would assume it does to a degree. I think it has some some kind of play on that, or at least it might be related to that. Maybe not, well, it'll probably be in its own context in this uh series or not in this game and not have any like relevance to how it is in well, Strange Journey because that's its own separate story. But yeah, I just I just thought I heard that name and I'm like, wait, that sounded familiar. All right, so this is the this is one thing that I saw that they now I saw it in English, and I'm kind of disappointed in. So the new skill that's shown here, Paraseline Blur. It's a four medium strength based light attack on one foe. I am so sad because I was so hoping that this was going to be a magic based skill because I want the Nahubino to have a. Like a, like an like an end game high tier like a high tier end game magic skill compared to like how we have like Murakumo or Wrath Tempest those sort of like like viable end game um skills that are like physical physical based and like physical oriented and like Runus Thunder you will eventually replace with Zio Baryon. I would. I just thought it'd be cool to have like severe magic tier skills, so then you could use that at the uh, towards the end. And also, I I kind of hope that well, well, there's also this new thing called luminescent mirage. Uh, I have a uh, that's a new skill. I don't know what it does, but I have a theory about this whole new form. Do you see how the blade is different? It's curved like a like almost like a scythe. There is there are two demons I can think of like major demons in SMT5 that have a scythe like uh like weapons or like appendage in a sense. And that is Zeus, and that is Tsukiyomi. I don't think Zeus is going to be the case because he was more of a side villain. So I don't see him like so. Okay, my th my theory is what we saw earlier. Like, let me see if I can find that scene. Like right here, something's going to happen to Awagami, and so the protofine version of him is going to like. Either get just I mean, he might get destroyed or something else happens entirely, right? I guess you're on the list. Similar, I guess maybe it's similar to how, um, where the protagonist technically died at one point in the main story, like Lamu's tentacle pierced him and it broke Aogami and the protagonist. It separate, it forcefully separated them, and then Tao sacrificed herself in order for them to live. I wonder if something similar like that is going to happen here, except Aogami is the one that gets destroyed. So, I see a couple a couple things happening here. Um I can see Algami gets a new proto fiend altogether, which like in like maybe he becomes a more complete version of himself. And maybe that will make him act more like the traditional Sisano as opposed to like how Algami is where he's like super stoic. Or It's possible that Yuzu's knowledge for uh, the Prime Minister, who is Tsukiyomi in disguise, gets transferred to the protagonist, and he becomes Tsukiyomi's Nahobino, as opposed to Yuzu, or you, I think his name is Yuzu, but Yuzu or Yuzu's, Yuzu becoming the Nahobino for Tsukiyomi. 
or another thing that could happen is that with Algomi dying, Tsukiyomi sacrifices himself to give his life to Algomi, so then they become like a one being altogether, similar to how Hansu took the the artifacts of Ra and became Kansu Ra, and in this case. He, he becomes like Susano Tsukiyomi or like some kind of fusion of the two. And the only reason why I think that is because when you see some of the skills, right? So like Parasoline Blur and then Luminescent Mirage, they're light based, right? Like they sound like something related to light. And. I don't know. Like when you think about light, you can also sometimes think of the, or you could think of well, you could think of the moonlight, or you could think of sunlight. Maybe Amaterasu does actually have a case like to come into this at some point. Maybe it's like Amaterasu fusing with Susano as opposed to Sukiyomi for fusing with Susano, because that's the only other sibling between the three of them that hasn't shown up yet in the main story. We had Susano, his his brother Sukiyomi, but they never see mention about his sister Amaterasu. Or this could be something Tao does, but I don't think it is like this is like Tao giving up herself to him or the protagonist. And I only think that because we see Tao later on in the new form, like her goddess form. So I don't know. I I'm curious. I I'm, I I can't wait for more information and eventually the game to just explain like how this came to be. I'm looking forward to it. What is your goal then? What kind of world? But it's also interesting how the skill has a condition of. You need to evade the attack, pri uh, pri like a, a pr attack prior to this turn, to use it. I think it's an interesting condition. I don't know if that is in. I don't know if that makes this move like so, like much stronger in like general because you're able to pull off a dodge, or like the condition of the dodge, and therefore it rewards you with that. What are you trying to create? We want it back. We wish to restore that glorious world. I never wanted to Okay, and based on that conversation that happened just now, I'm like, I'm going to assume that was between Lilith and the new girl. So there, I think it's a, it's possible that uh the new girl Yoko, she has Lilith's knowledge. And so if Lilith and her were to fuse, they become Lil like Lilith's Nahobino. you to get my revenge. Then I really And based on this conversation, I think I think it further supports the fact that Kansu's like side quest, like chain, uh, side quest chain is getting like redone. Well, like obviously, but it's also getting like more cutscenes added to it. Kind of like, well, we kind of see this. So I assume this is for that specific cutscene where he gives up the challenge for the throne, uh, but wants to save uh, Yuzu's sister's life. Really would be alone. We have to keep fighting, or all the sacrifices that brought us here will have meant. Cool that Jack Aguilo, uh, similar to Jack Wolfle, except this time it, it adds Tarunda to it. Which is nice because it doesn't overlap with uh, Ardvaka's spe special attack um, or fire move because that's fire with the defense down. Nothing. I know. I know you've seen how broken this world is. So they've gone to the other side to finish the job. Certainly possible. I have to wonder what Yakuma and Nuo are going to be doing in this new story, because it seems like they've taken continued to take in more of a sideline to this. Which kind of makes me sad, because they're supposed to be the neutral representative, but I feel like they didn't do much to be a neutral representative in the base game. Like, you fight Yakuma once, you fight Nuo before that, and then later they see you and like, oh, let's just give you an exposition dump. Granted, Yakumo had interesting story details sprinkled throughout the game through the NPCs. Like you learn about his backstory about why he dislikes demons so much. But I just wish they were more involved. And I don't know. I don't think they are going to be more involved. They probably have more cutscenes here. But I can I can only hope that they will be more involved. Now, the time has come for you to prepare the Nahobino for sacrifice. Prepare the Nahobino for sacrifice. I wonder who she's talking to. Okay, so the, here, like right here, this is what I'm talking about. We see Tao in her other form. So at one point, she is going to. Hmm. 
Maybe she dies trying to give you your new form and gets reborn as this. That's a possibility. I mean, we saw earlier in the trailer where she is in Yoko's arms, so I thought maybe she just got attacked. I don't know. All I know is I'm going to be definitely playing the second half of this trailer on repeat because this music is so freaking good. I want to hear the full track <laughs> and just listen to that for 10 hours. But yeah, well, that's my rundown of how uh, of the English dub version of the trailer. And if you liked what you saw, please feel uh, feel free to like leave a like, comment below what you're super excited for for this game. And if you're interested, leave a follow. This YouTube channel is usually just me uploading my VODs from my Twitch, from me streaming on Twitch, which you can find me at Yuzora Kuroboshi there. I think it's Yuzora underscore Kuroboshi if you need to be specific. But yeah, I, that's where I stream on Twitch. If you're curious, uh, you can always uh, stop by, say hi, we can chat. And um, if you're curious to see what games I would be streaming, I post my schedule on Twitter, what I plan to be playing for the week. Yeah. So if you if you if you enjoyed hearing my thoughts and seeing my reaction to this, uh, even though it's kind of fragmented, uh, leave a like comment. You could leave uh, subscribe, follow me on Twitch, follow me on Twitter. I also have a TikTok that I upload clips. I gotta get better at putting more stuff on there, but I will eventually. <laughs> I'll get better at that. But yeah, thank you again for watching this, and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.